Hi there, everyone. This is Mr. Fred from GetMeCoding.com, and we're going to walk through this tutorial using Dreamweaver in combination with Bootstrap to build a web page. Why would you want to use Bootstrap? Bootstrap is a framework that allows you to create what are known as responsive websites that combines JavaScript and CSS to design and develop a web page that's responsive, which means it could be viewed in a device. It'll reformat itself for a smartphone or for a tablet or for a television or for a web browser. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do, though, is we are going to create a new site. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to come to site, new site, and I'm going to call this GMC1 for Get Me Coding 1, and I'm going to click Save. Now, when I do that, you're going to notice over here some things happening in this panel where we start to see our files get saved. Because we're utilizing Bootstrap and we're inside a Dreamweaver, Dreamweaver is going to provide us with all the framework files. All right, so keep an eye open for this now. So we're going to start off by creating new. We're going to select the document type as HTML, and you're going to see that the framework that's available is Bootstrap. We're going to create new. And now for this example, I'm not going to check on the include a pre-built layout. After this example is over, I encourage you to check that box so you could see what other starting points Dreamweaver can give you. So we have this all set up. We're going to click Create. Now, when I do that, I land here in my split view, and I could see that I have some code, some generated HTML code. And if you want to learn about the basics of HTML, I encourage you to go out to the getmecoding.com site where I give a real simple blog entry where you can walk through um, building a simple HTML file. Now, also up here, you're going to notice several other files are open. And these are all part of this, this bootstrap framework. And you can notice that there's a .css, a .min.js, another .min.js, and a last .js. JS stands for JavaScript. .css stands for cascading style sheets. So I click on my source code file. Now over here on the right hand side, I could see that a folder or two folders appear. These are part of the, the bootstrap framework. And if I were to expand them, I could see that those files are in there and there's another file there. Okay. So taking a look here, I want to point out something that's really important as you begin to learn how to do web development or even some software programming eventually. You can notice that when we build files, we often refer to other files. We link to other files. So up here at the top of the HTML document, I could see I have a link tag, and it's referring to a file on my computer. I know that because, first of all, it starts off with file, and it's referring to the C drive. So this is known as an absolute address. It means it's absolutely pointing to this location, okay? So it's pointing to this file. But if we were to move this out to the internet, well, it can't point to my hard drive anymore because, well, even though I might be connected to the internet, my computer is not a web server where a website would reside. So if I come down here now, I could see also there's some references to these .js files. And these are utilizing what's known as the script tag. These are important things to note because these are about to change as soon as I click File, Save. When I do that, it's going to prompt me, obviously, for a, a file name. And I'm going to just call this index.html. And I'm going to click Save. When I do that, all of those absolute addresses get converted to what are known as relative addresses. It means that it's utilizing a mechanism that file finds the file that we need to point to relative to the location. So here's the index file. And if, if it wants to pull the CSS settings, it looks to the CSS folder, which is right here. And then it looks for this file called bootstrap-4.4.1.css. Okay, important thing to note. All right, now that it's done, let's move on. All right, I'm going to build a real simple layout, but I want you to notice down here, there are some comment tags that get placed by Dreamweaver, just reminding you, this is where your code really should go if you're building your web page, the front, pa the front facing web page itself. So I'm going to start off by adding my navigation. To do that, there's a number of ways we could achieve that. You'll notice that when we establish the bootstrap framework, there is a tab down here in our panels called snippets. You could add code right from these snippets. A lot of great starting points to make a responsive design. But there's also another easier way. For those of you who are just learning this, you could utilize this, these sets of tabs up here. So if you go to Insert, because we're working with Bootstrap components, and you can see that there's other components we could also add in, 
we can just select it right from here. So I'm going to pick my insertion point here in my code, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my navigation bar. If I come down here, I can see that I do have some options. And if I look at this drop down, I could say I do a basic nav bar, or I could have it fixed to the top, which means as someone scrolls down the page, the navigation bar remains locked in place. But I'm going to go with a basic nav bar for today. And that's going to then drop the code right in. So you'll notice up here in the visual view, you could see that you, know, you, you could notice that there is the navigation bar, but also down in the code, we can see the code that got inspected. One of the great things about visual code coding tools is it can kind of teach you. Now there's a lot being thrown at you here, but it's all editable, not editable, editable. <laughs> so you can notice that here's the label for the home link. There's a drop down sub items in the menu. You can, you can edit all of it directly from here, or you could edit it up here inside the actual page it's, or the visual page itself. All right. Now, once I have that navigation bar there, that's looking good, but then I'm going to come down and I'm going to add after my, my navigation bar, I'm going to come down in here where this closing nav is. I'm just going to place my cursor for insertion and I'm going to place an image. Normally slider images are those large images that scale well, high resolution. But for the sake of this example, I'm going to add what's known as a carousel. A carousel is a, almost like a slideshow. So if I click on carousel, it then adds the code and the carousel right in there. And you'll see down here in the code that's highlighted, I'm going to scroll down so you can see it a little bit better. You can see once again, we're making references to an absolute location to a placeholder. So a placeholder is great from early design stages because it's placing something in a spot where something else will go. So this is where your, your other images will eventually go. But notice it's also an absolute address and that is because I didn't save it. I can see that I didn't save it because the asterisk is indicating it. So if I come up to file, save, or do a control S, it's going to move an image into a new folder called images. And there's my placeholder PNG, which is this gray box and click OK. And there you could see uh, the placeholders and all the sliders are there. So you can once again, come in here and edit these header tags. And you can see when I click on the code down here, they get highlighted up here. So you could edit it up here or you could edit it down in your code, wherever you feel comfortable with. So now I'm coming along. I want to add now a lower section after my carousel. I'm going to add some cards. So I want to do a three column look to do that. It's simply done by coming over here and I'm going to click on my place where I want to insert my code after my carousel. And I'm going to say grid row with a column. I select that and it's going to ask me how many columns I want to add. I'll pick three. Once again, it adds the code. All right, this is where it gets a little bit interesting and you can start to observe some more things. To achieve these columns, it's not making use of the old HTML table. It's utilizing the highly accessible div tag. So here we go. If you want to note here, you could have a column. You have column one, column two, and then column three. And as you can see, as I clicked on them, it's changing up there in the view. Now. If I want to insert an actual content piece, this is where I can add, add a card. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to highlight that and I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to come over here to the right hand side and I'm going to select a card. So when I click this little drop down, I can notice that I have different card options. I'm going to go with the generic one for now and say card. Once again, it inserts my code and notice that it gets inserted between that opening and then closing div tag of the column that I just put in there. You could also see that's making use of a class called col-xl-4. So this starts this, the col obviously stands for column. When I come down in here, I can modify the code and it's also placing a uh, placeholder, which is fine for me now. I'm going to continue to add another card. I'm going to add this right here. I'll delete that out. I'm going to add another card. And then I'm going to come down to my last column. And then I'm going to add my next card. I'm going to pull down my 
WYSIWYG editor here a little bit, and I'm going to make some adjustments. I could see that I have my navigation bar, I have my carousel, and now I have these three columns, but they look a little, well, a little odd. I'm going to go ahead, click on these, and I'm just going to stretch it out so it fits much nicer. It gives me an idea for the dimensions of the images that I would want to put in here. And then I could easily edit the content right in here. Of course, <laughs> that's a little odd. Hello. But it, you get the point. All right. So now you start to see how easy it is to build a web page that will be responsive. But what does it really look like? We could preview this in our browser. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to File, Real-Time Preview, or hit F12, and I'm going to select Mozilla Firefox. It's going to prompt me for the changes to be saved. I'm going to say yes. It's going to move in another image, which is the card images here, into, an image, into the images folder for good organization, and click OK. Bring over my browser. And so now I could see what this particular page would look like. Here's my navigation bar with a search block. Here's my carousel. And then here are my cards down below. So what does the responsiveness of this look like? There's a variety of ways you could view a web page in different um, devices. But even if you were just to take this right now and drag it to different sizes, oops, let's see if I can grab that. I could see that my content starts to shift. So as it is, once again, coming into different sizes, I could see my content is formatting for these different sizes. Once again, there are websites and features within the, um, in the browsers that you're utilizing here. You can come in here and you can use response, oops, excuse me, <laughs> wrong one. Come in here and go to web developer and go into responsive design mode. And you could specify which device you would like to view this in. And that is how you can make use of Dreamweaver and Bootstrap to design a responsive web page and ultimately a responsive website. I hope you found this helpful.